Hey everyone, welcome back. I hope y'all are having an amazing week so far. Today we're doing a bit of a more in-depth tutorial. I'm gonna show you how to make vegan croissants, both plain and chocolate ones. Quick note about ingredients first. In this recipe, I'm using bread flour. I would highly recommend that you do the same. You can find bread flour at most supermarkets and it just has a bit of a higher gluten protein content than all purpose flour. So in my experience, I find that it's just a lot easier to get the right texture with your dough and you just get more consistent results, but if you have to substitute in all-purpose flour, you are going to need to add a little bit extra. Next, I wanna talk about butter. I tried two kinds. I tried Earth Balance, which you can find pretty much anywhere, and I also tried these melt buttery sticks that I found at Sprouts. I know that Miyoko's also makes a vegan butter. I haven't seen it anywhere, however. Croissants I made with the melt butter tasted exactly like regular croissants made with dairy butter. If you gave them to someone in a blind taste test, they would not know they're vegan. I kid you not. The croissants that I made with Earth Balance did have a sort of like vegetable shortening flavor. It's really subtle. It's not necessarily bad, especially if you're making chocolate croissants or serving them with jam. But if you're just eating them plain, you'll probably pick up on the flavor. Those are just my two cents about ingredients. And now let's get into the tutorial. Step one is to proof two packets of active dry yeast in lukewarm water for about 10 minutes. I have tried this recipe with soy milk and also almond milk. I didn't like how it affected the texture of the dough, so I recommend just using water. Then when the yeast is foamy, you're going to add your dry ingredients. So that's three and a half cups of bread flour, one fourth a cup of vegan granulated sugar, two teaspoons of salt, and six tablespoons of vegan butter that you soften at room temperature. Mix up these ingredients until the dough sticks together. A stand mixer will make this easy, but you can technically do this by hand. Then switch to your dough hook and knead at a medium speed until the dough is smooth and elastic. And this might actually take longer than you'd expect, anywhere from six to 10 minutes. When it's ready, the dough should bounce back when you poke it. And I also like to use what's called the window pane test. So you should be able to stretch a small piece of dough in your hands till you can see light through it. And if it tears while you're stretching it, you need to keep kneading it to develop the gluten a little bit more. Transfer your dough to an oiled container, cover it up and let it rise for one to two hours. This will depend on the temperature where you are and you just want the dough to somewhere between double and triple in size. Then turn it out onto a lightly floured surface, punch out the air and fold it and roll it gently with your rolling pin to get it into a rectangular shape that is even in thickness throughout. Next, wrap it up or put it into an airtight container and let it rest in your fridge overnight. This step is important. It allows the gluten to relax and the slow fermentation adds a lot of depth to the flavor. You'll also need to shape two sticks of softened vegan butter into a square slab. I usually avoid using plastic bags, but this is one instance in which it makes life a lot easier. You just stick your butter into a bag, squeeze out the air and roll it into a square. And you can also shape your butter between two pieces of parchment. Either way, you need to refrigerate this overnight as well. The next day, take your dough and your butter slab out of the fridge. Let them sit out for about 10 minutes to make them slightly easier to work with. You want them to be roughly the same texture. Turn out your dough onto a lightly floured surface and roll it out to about 18 by 9 inches. You don't have to be super precise about any of the measurements here. Place your butter slab on one half and then fold the dough over to seal it in. Next, we're gonna perform the folds. This is gonna create all of the beautiful flaky layers for our croissants. You wanna work really quickly here so your ingredients stay cold and your butter stays solid. If at any point you feel like your ingredients are getting too warm or your butter's melting, throw them back in the fridge to rest for 15 to 20 minutes or so and then resume. It was quite cool in my house when I was filming, so I was able to work quickly and just perform the folds in one go. First, roll out your dough to about 24 by nine inches. And here you're going to do a double turn by folding both ends into the center and then folding the dough again in half this time like a book. So after this turn, you've taken your dough from one layer of butter to four. Next, roll out your dough again to 24 by nine inches. And this time, just fold it into thirds as if you were folding a letter to fit into an envelope. So now you've multiplied your layers of butter from four to 12 and then roll your dough just a little bit to get it back to a uniform thickness, wrap it back up and put it in your fridge to rest for another hour. Finally, it's time to shape your croissants. It's easiest I find to split the dough and work with half at a time here, unless you have a lot of counter space. Roll your dough out to about 18 by nine inches. And then I'm cutting this batch into eight triangles for medium sized croissants. Six pieces will give you a larger cafe style croissants and 12 pieces will give you cute little mini croissants. Use as sharp a knife as possible here so that you get a nice clean cut and you don't crush and seal the layers together. I'm also cutting a little slit in the short side of each triangle. 
and I'm widening the slit a little bit when I roll the croissants to elongate them. When you transfer your croissants to a lined baking tray, make sure that the point of the croissant is on the bottom. For chocolate croissants, you simply cut the dough into rectangles instead of triangles, lay down your desired amount of chocolate, and roll them up. And just, again, make sure that the seam is on the bottom. Let your croissants rise for one to two hours, again, depending on how warm your room is. You want them to at least double in size. Near the end of your rise time, preheat your oven to 400 degrees. If you want your croissants to have a glossy finish, you can brush them with a mixture of agave or maple syrup and plant milk, but this is optional. Then bake your croissants for 10 minutes at 400 degrees, then lower the heat to 350 degrees, and bake for another 12 to 15 minutes, depending on your oven and how big your croissants are. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you found this video helpful. Please let me know if you make your own vegan croissants using this recipe, and I will see you in my next video. Bye. In a French ass restaurant. Hurry up with my damn croissants. I am a god.